Guest Radio 93.5. Carla with you, and we have Chief Mark Hill in studio. Welcome. Thanks for joining us to make another announcement. Yes, thank you for having me, Carla. Are you keeping cool? I am. It is, it's <laughs> it hot. Is out there. <laughs> Keep that water on you. Yes. Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to provide an update, uh, my weekly updates, that is. I just wanted to make a note um, that moving forward, um, my Friday radio shows will be um, moved um, till later in the day. So my first show will be at 3 o'clock at CKRZ, and then I'll have this show around 3.30. Okay, perfect. So just moving forward, just a quick note. Um, so again, I just wanted to provide, provide I have, really have four updates. Uh, one is in regards to, again, I, you've seen in my past updates, uh, basically the fruition of our Six Nations Small Business Emergency Relief Fund. Um, that has since been launched, and we have had applications in place. I just want to provide an, uh, an update in terms of the application deadline. So the deadline will be Friday, July 10th, uh, by 3 p.m. So you need to have all your application your applications in by this date and time. Successful applicants will be notified by July 17th, uh, with funds being dispersed uh, during the week of July 20th to the 24th. Uh, you can email completed applications, and a copy of your status card uh, to Arlene Miracle at sixnations.ca. And if you have any questions or inquiries, uh, you can also contact Arlene um, at 519-717-7592. You can also uh, drop applications off at the Gr- uh, Great Building sorry, uh, at 16 Sunrise Court, where a secure drop box is located in the Sunrise Court entrance. Um, Again, you know, we've been doing our best to um, minimize as much in-person as we can. Um, However, if you need to, obviously, you can can do so as well at the administration building. So I just want to provide that update in regards to the small business fund. So the deadline, again, Friday, July 10th, by 3 p.m. applications must um, be in uh, by that time. And also just a quick note also that we... In regards to if you own multiple businesses, we are only doing one business at this time. Okay. Um, again, so we want people, we want those, they are limited funds, um, and we want it to get to as many small businesses as much as possible. So that's the reasoning for that. The second update that I'd want to provide is in regards to our transfer uh, station. Uh, so one, we are finalizing the details of uh, the transfer station, uh, but have not set a date yet as to uh, when it would be operational. Um, again, we are um, making sure that we're expect you can expect our communications department to put out the resources on social media, as well as our website, uh, to help keep the community involved with the transition and advise them of that date once it's set. Um, again, an important point to make uh, note of is that no time will people not be able to dispose of their waste at our line full site, so there will be no interruption in that. Uh, we are working to provide a smooth transition. Uh, for uninterrupted service to the community. Um, and for the landfill site closure and the transfer station project, uh, to properly close the landfill site, we need to cover the waste with soil. Um, and the project will continue to receive supply of clay soil from Brooks Landfill. And we are getting our topsoil from recently developed farmland uh, within the Hamilton area. We will con- uh, be continuing to test the soil every 5,000 cubic meters and posting them for the community to view at a link which is available on our Six Nations website as well as our social media platforms. Uh, the environmental and financial due diligence is, um, that we had on our consultant engineer complete uh, for this uh, soil is also available at this link for public to view. Uh, the hauling of the soil is, resu- is resumed last week um, and is expected to be completed by the end of August. Hauling uh, will take place Monday to Friday between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., through our ACON and Six Nations joint venture, A6N, uh, who is the general contractor on the project uh, and will be identifying the trucks hauling soil for this project by having a magnet placed on them with the A6N logo for the community to be able to identify them. There are strict hauling routes from Highway 6 to Fourth Line to the Six Nations landfill site, uh, which will be in effect for this project. And if anyone has any questions um, or inquiries on the project, they can contact our, our Director of Public Works at 519 519- Four four five four two four two. Just a side note on this uh, update as well is you know my office has also received uh, complaints on the rate of speed of these drivers of uh, driving the trucks. So that has since been rectified, and that message has got to the drivers to respect our community and slow down uh, while they're hauling hauling the soil. 
Uh, the other piece is, you know, we were really putting a, a, an onus and in, in essence on uh, the environment, right, and what that looks like. And so, you know, we, we need to develop our ways and a process to, you know, making sure that we are bringing in, um, you know, clean things to our and making sure we're looking at the bigger picture of environment. Mm-hmm. And so that's also that's also an update that I can provide further. Uh, the next piece that I wanted to also touch on is in regards to uh, the joint statement that was released uh, by Six Nations Grand River Elected Council as well as the Six Nations Cannabis Commission. So since 2017, the people of Six Nations have said what they want the cannabis industry to look like in our community. Um, one, to ensure that there's a safe product for adult use recreational cannabis and kept out of the hands of our children and youth. Uh, that environmental protections are in place, that an industry without a monopoly, and for cannabis businesses to make contributions to the community. Uh, To meet the community's priorities on August 2nd, 2019, the Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council placed a moratorium on all cannabis activity within the territory until the Six Nations Cannabis Commission's licensing and regulatory process is completed. That moratorium remains in place today. Illicit cannabis continues to be grown, processed, and consumed in our community without safety standards or quality practices in place, which has resulted in devastating overdoses due to cannabis being sold uh, that was laced with with fentanyl. Given this and recent announcements by groups intent on continuing to operate illegal cannabis businesses supplying unregulated cannabis, we believe it it is important to highlight to the community that anyone Willingly engaging in illegal activities in respect of cannabis is at risk of criminal and civil liability, and more importantly, is endangering the health and safety of individuals in our community. It is our responsibility to ensure cannabis businesses on the territory are accountable for their actions by conducting business with an illegal framework that benefits of the cannabis industry, return to the people of Six Nations, and that the health and safety are upheld against defined and transparent standards. We have a team of professionals working with the Commission to build a regulated framework that will ensure appropriate and proven measures are in place, which will include testing of harmful substances commonly found in illicitly grown cannabis such as pesticides and heavy metals, and also to ensure that the safety and quality of all cannabis products sold on the territory. While there are variables that exist that may impact the timeline, Our goal is to begin accepting applications for production by the end of November 2020. Again, we thank you for your continued patience and understanding in these urgent matters to protect the health and safety of all involved. So again, you know, we we have, this is very, an issue that we have to take very seriously. And I know there's been obviously some controversies within the cannabis uh, industry itself and what that's going to look like. However, we need to maintain the health and safety of all of our, our, our people and our community members. Um, so again, you know, we're we're just really looking to the next steps. We know that the timeline is is obviously been an issue, um, and we are looking to expedite as much as we can. However, you know, we need to also keep in mind that this is this is a new industry, and um, you know, we there are going to be mistakes made, and there have been mistakes made, and it's a learning and growing process as we move forward. But collectively, we need to move forward, and we need to do it in the most safest way possible. For sure. The other piece, again, I'm going to leave with is in terms, I want to leave on a good note by saying congratulations to all of our graduates. Yes. I know it's been some unforeseen times, and unfortunately, uh, our graduates were not able to physically walk across that stage. However, on behalf of Chief and Council, we really just want to send our most biggest uh, congratulations to all of the graduates for their accomplishments over the school year. Uh, and really just look to continue supporting them throughout their career, their their education career. It's a big step. Yes. Yeah, so just on that note, we are going to do that recognition on July 25th. Awesome. Where we'll be having our own drive through grad. Again, more details and, and um, information will be available once, it, once all logistical pieces are finished. Um, but the date is set for July 25th where we'll be, we will be recognizing all of our graduates as, much, as best as we can. Okay. But for now, as we know it, the end of June... It's graduation time. Yes. <laughs> um, and so we really just want to say a huge congratulations to all those graduates and to continue to keep up the great work. Especially doing it throughout a pandemic, exactly. right? Finishing off and, and uh, graduating. It's been a hard year. It, so to get through that, that final ex- step, it must feel it, really good. Exactly. And we, we know, you know, shifting over to, 
you know, we have had to be so reliant and dependent on technology and internet and our connectivity isn't the best, you know, at this time. However, I will be providing updates as to our next steps and what we are have in place, our plans in place in terms of um, getting better access to connectivity through our territory uh, in regards to internet okay. um, and what that looks like because we know there's a lot of people working at home. There's a lot of students who are finishing assignments and getting on Zoom and uh, mm-hmm. everything else. So, you know, we're going to be doing our best to make sure that we um, we expedite that process as best we can. Okay. So that's all the updates that I have for this week. I look forward uh, to next week to and providing any further updates that, I, that I'll have then. Um, and really just want to wish everybody a, a, a happy weekend. Enjoy the weekend and to, to stay cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is going to be a hot weekend. It so is. Yeah. <laughs> check in on your on our elders, For and sure. neighbors and family and make sure everyone is good. So stay thank you so hydrated. Much. Stay yes. cool. <laughs> yes. Thank All right. You. Well, thank you again for making this announcement. We'll look forward to another announcement uh, next Friday around 3.30. And uh, have a good weekend as well. Stay safe. Stay cool. We have more music right after this. <laughs>